Here's an example of a shot composited with ACES pipeline. And what I had to do is clean up here, also add a car, add a sign here, and a few signs there, also a little clean up there. There's a few pictures I took with my iPhone. So these are sRGB photos. And I needed to composite them here. So how do I make this work together? When I know that I'm just part of the production chain, this needs to go to a colorist. The colorist needs a log footage in order to have all the flexibility to do the color corrections and other manipulations after I'm done with it. So this is the scene without any color transforms and we're gonna start here. I have the background here, then I have the cleaned version of the sidewalk, which I did with the stamp tool. I also have here part I took to Photoshop to clean it up. So it's a still coming from the log footage to Photoshop and back. Then I got this sign, which is an sRGB photo, the car, which is also sRGB, this sign again, this is the same log footage in Rotobrush. I did it right on the log footage and I have the phone which I use Mocha to rotoscope that part of the phone. So these are the parts I need to assemble together to make a composite, a log version for the colorist. Let's see how it's done. For the background, I'm using OCIO and I'm choosing ACES. Going from Sony, you can see you have many flavors here. I know that I'm using Sony S-Log3 with this flavor. And I'm going to ACES CG. Copy, paste again, same thing. Same thing here. For the sign, we're gonna need to use input generic sRGB. Same thing for the car. For this sign, same thing. And for the lock footage again, from Sony, like this. So now I need an adjustment layer to view this. Take open color yo from here, going from ACES CG2 back to Sony. So I've made a round trip from log to linear and back to log. Now I can choose display and see this in sRGB or Rec 709, whichever I want. And you can see we have some work to do here. I can see the car is underexposed. So I can tap exposure, use the bypass, just bring this up and play with the camera until I'm getting the color correction I need. I think the shot is too bright. So, so here I can go back to log and I can place another adjustment layer. Let's call this Rec 709. Open color IO. And going from the camera to Rec 709. And maybe do a little exposure before the lot. So this is kind of my LUT view, and this is the log. So when I want to render, I render this, but if I want to view this, I can view this. So now I, I can see that maybe I need to work on the car and add a little more exposure, maybe play with the camera. And of course, I can use all sorts of techniques to get the specific look. Same with the park sign. Exposure, don't forget the checkbox. Just crank it up like this. Also for this sign, same thing, looks better. I, if you have a little effect like shadow or something like that, you can try placing them after the color transform or before, see which result is better. So you can see already I'm having a good results. I need to work on the shadows here. And I can do this with solid layers. So 
just add a black solid and create a mask like this. I think you get it right. So you can see already things are starting to look very nice and it's all in 32 bit. And you can be sure that when you bring this to Colorist, everything is maintained. Now there's a few things you need to watch out for. Uh, for example, alpha. Let's just zoom in here. So you can see there's there's a problem here on the edge, right? You need to fix this. It's something to do with the alpha channels. It's getting some strange values here and you can tone them down. You can just add levels effect, go into alpha and just divide the gamma by the sRGB or X709 gamma curve. And now you get this. So you can fix this issue. This is one thing. All this still imagery, the car, the sign, uh, the sign here, they don't have grain. So I need to add grain. Now, instead of doing this for each, I'm gonna do this for all of them together. I'm gonna to get the sign and the car and the other sign and even this still from Photoshop and I'm gonna pre-compose. Let's call this composite. Now things are going to look different. When I go inside, it's gonna look like this. I need the background as a reference and things here are looking in linear. I can't view linear properly without an sRGB curve. So I'm gonna take the adjustment layers and the background here, P paste them here, set the background as a guide layer so it won't render. This is the log, also guide layer because I don't want it to render. So now I have a reference of how it's supposed to look and I can fix anything I need to fix right here. But when I go here, they're all in the same composition. So when I add grain, it's on all of them together. So I want to add grain to the car and to the signs. If I add match grain, you can see it's clipped because match grain it doesn't support 32 bit, but we can fix this. And it's actually a good thing because grain and sharpen are operations you usually want to do in log color space, not in linear. So let's convert this to log do the effect and then going from log back to linear. We're gonna do this with OCIO, going from ACES CG to ACES CCT, that's the ACES log color space. Then we're gonna duplicate it and we're gonna invert. So it's kind of a sandwich, which we're gonna put it in the middle. Let's do match grain and place it in the middle and change it to final. You can see it now it's very aggressive because it doesn't know what's the reference. We're gonna choose the BG reference. So it's going to take the grain from here. Now we can see that we added grain. We can play this. So I wanna test how this looks. Just gonna set the work area and then take the region of interest like this so it can render faster. And I just want to check that the grain looks okay. So we can just check with RGB to see maybe I need to tweak it a little, add more intensity, maybe make it a little smaller. Okay, so now we got that out of the way. Another effect that needs to work on log is the Lumetri effect. And let me show you what happens when I just do an adjustment layer and add Lumetri without doing anything. Just note that I'm working in linear color space. So what Lumetri is actually looking at is this. So when I try to go 
to exposure and crank it up, you will see that it doesn't act like exposure. It's just doing something else, which is very unintuitive. You can see that if you look at the waveform, that I'm going to just reduce quality, that it's not behaving like it should. It just creates something strange. So we need to do the same sandwich. I'm going to go, I'm going to do ACES, going from ACES CG to ACES CCT, and duplicate and invert. And Luitri is going to be in the middle. So now you can see it acts like true exposure. Okay, so just remember that and also that you can use exposure and check this and it will behave same. So let's see what else we need to fix. It needs to be a little blurrier, this car. So I'm going to go inside and I need to fix the blur on this car. You see the shot is a little blurrier. Don't forget to uncheck this. I can try to add a blur here. You can see how realistic this blur really is. Just a little. And of course, on top of that, there will be the grain and everything else. So when I want to render this, this is the guy layer, so it's going to be rendered like this. And the colorist has all the information that he needs. Let's see another example using ACES pipeline, this time with some common effects and plugins, with demonstration how to set them up properly while working in linear color space in After Effects. Most AE effects and plugins are designed for the sRGB color space. This will behave differently in linear color space, even if you place after them a color transform to sRGB. Some effects require an adjustment layer, so you need to set it up properly. Let's see a few examples of this with some common effects and plugins. I have this scene that was created in an ASUS pipeline. Let's see what we have here. This is also shot with a Sony camera. You can see that on the Sony, I'm going from the Sony S-Log3 to ACES CG. Let's see what I did there with Particular. So I got this particle effect. Now this is how it looks in sRGB. And as I said before, you need to go from a video space into a linear color space. But what you can also do is use a method you place in the input space, one of the output spaces. You can go either with Rec 709 or sRGB. And what it means is that it will create high dynamic range in this layer. You can see that when I'm placing my mouse over it, you can see the values here going all the way to 16. Now, if I did it with Generic sRGB, you can see that I'm not pushing over one. So I'm not getting overbrights. So if you have an effect that needs those overbrights, you can use this method with caution. And Stu Mashowitz in the article talks about it in the description. But this is how it's done in the output going to Rec 709 or sRGB. What I did then is added an exposure to tone it down a little bit. So what you see eventually is this. So let's see how it looks when I add a camera lens blur. And you can see that you get all those nice highlights. 
So this is the spark. You can see how beautiful this looks. If I had here going from generic, it would be much duller because it's not pushing over one. It's not getting overbrights. If I want overbrights, I can change it to Rec 709. And now I'm getting this very nice overbrights. Let's see another effect I did there these sparks again with particular after that i did a glow and after that ocio again going from output rec 709 to accg and getting high values you can see that and then i also toned it down a little bit you can try and experiment try to see what happens when you use a generic like this, it's a different result. So when you're using glows and these type of effects, you can try to use exposure to kind of adjust it to make it fit your needs to whatever it is you need to do. Let's see how lens flare reacts. This time it's optical flares. I have to put OCIO. This time I'm going from uh, generic because if I use Rec 709, it's way too strong. So I can go with generic and I use exposure to get a little more of it. Now, what's important to know about lens flare is that you want to composite it on black and use add. And you need to be careful with effects that apply on adjustment layer, because if you try to put an effect on an adjustment layer and then put OCIO, then OCIO also acts as an adjustment layer. So that can create problems. So you can try to set it on black and then use add. So now it reacts the same way it would if you worked in sRGB. Also, to remember, you don't want to use the screen blend mode, only add when working in a linear workflow. Also had a glow effect. For this, I use it directly in linear. I didn't see any problem using add or screen. You might want to see if you have problems with it. If you do, you might try to use OCIO and change it to generic sRGB to ACCG and see if that gives you better or worse results before or after or without completely. Another effect is star glow, which I used OCIO before with generic texture and not after. See what happens when I do this after. It gets too much. So it's before and I'm using exposure again, in a linear mode to just tone it down. So these are kind of different solutions I found to work with flares and glows and to make them work as expected in a linear color space. So here's another example of using a glowy effect like shine. It's used as an adjustment layer, again, using add. In the shine effect, I'm using also add, going from generic. And then after that, there's exposure, just cranking it up. You can try use Rec 709, or I think it's better result with generic, like this. So this is my experience with all these glows, and it's worked fine so far using these methods. Let's see an example on how to do a screen insert with a column manage workflow. I got this log footage. This is shot with Ari Alexa camera. Also got this sRGB screen. And I need to composite this when I know that this needs to go to a colorist. So I can't composite in display working color space. I need a workflow that retains the color information. So let's do this the log way. For the screen, I'm going to place color profile converter going from sRGB to 
Arilog C white color gamut exposure index 800. Above everything, I will place an adjustment layer, set it as a guide layer so it won't render. And I'm going to place a lookup table for the Alexa camera. I have different options here. I'm going to choose this. So I finished the color management part. Now I'm left to the compositing. I can adjust the screen. I will use exposure, monitor the scopes, and just make it fit to the signal. And obviously I can use various techniques to get this right. When I'm done, this will be rendered as high quality master ProRes. Let's do the same thing, only this time with a linearized workflow. For the background, I'm going to use Color Profile Converter going from Arilog C to the same profile. And I check this, linearize, because I want to linearize this layer. For the screen, I'm going to go from sRGB to Arilog C linearize. And on top, there's the same footage again, only after color keying. Same with Arilog C linearized. On top of that, I will place an adjustment layer with Color Profile Converter from Arilog C Linear to Arilog C. This is how I remove the linearization. And on top of that, I will place my lookup table. Now, all that's left to do is adjust the color. I'm going to use Exposure. Don't forget to check this because I'm in a linear workflow. In the end, I'm producing the same thing, a log export. Another example where I would use log working color space is with digital cleanups. Let's say I just need to clean up this line or remove it. Then I would just place a lot as an adjustment layer and just work on the log. Maybe I need to do some cloning here. So I just work in log, do whatever I need to do and render this. And I would use a display working color space when the project is with a lot of motion graphics and the need to be very specific in the colors, in the gradients, in the backgrounds. This is an example of a commercial I did uh, compositing to, and it has all these Photoshop still imagery that was composited in sRGB. So trying to work with this with a linear workflow is really unnecessary because I'm also finishing the commercial in After Effects. Okay, so that wraps it up. I hope this will help you with your compositing. And if you have any questions or observations, please share them in the comments. Until next time, take care. Oh.